Hi everyone, welcome to My Two Cents, Sense and Change, the show that is a social platform to listen to the unheard and listen to their two cents to spark some sense and inspire change. I'm your host, Anna Samanamu, and today we're actually, we actually have an interesting topic today, and I think it's going to be pretty fun also. So we're going to talk about defining the age gap on social media. And today's guest is Dennis Appel. Now, the name may not seem familiar, but if you're on TikTok, then you would definitely know who I'm talking about. We'll discuss how this New Jersey dad is making moves and trending on TikTok. And at the same time, we'll offer listeners a special surprise at the end. Now, be sure to listen all the way through for the details. Our guest today is Dennis Appel. He is you know, a regular dad from New Jersey, but according to his LinkedIn, he is a constructor. And at the same time, he does have a passion for dancing. He's going to share with us all the deets on how he got started and how he feels about this whole new trend. So, hi, Dennis. Thank you so much for joining. You're welcome. It's great to be here. My first podcast. <laughs> I'm a virgin, so take it easy on me. Oh my God. Well, I definitely feel honored. And of course, anyone who's going to be hearing this episode will be, I think, thrilled as well. Because just as through TikTok, you bring us so much joy. I think if we also hear your perspective and your story, it would also be a joy for all of them also. Yeah. That's the best part. Bringing, I mean, I'm not a professional dancer. I'm here to make people smile and laugh. So that's the best part of this whole thing. Oh, that's a great mentality. Um, yeah. So, can you explain to us a little bit of how you got started on, like, what it? Tech, if you're not a professional dancer, then what is it that you do? And uh, I was, well, it started when I was very young. My mother, we uh, had two boys right away, but when she turned 21, me and my brother were Irish twins. And um, every Saturday morning, she had a couch with twin tables, and she would put on the American Bandstand was first, and then Soul Train was second. Either one, I don't remember what order it was, and it was a long time ago. I was little. <laughs> and um, she put the music on, and me and my brother would just dance, improv, dance where we felt, and my mother would be in the middle. So that's where the dancing, the whole dancing started. And then I realized um, <clears throat> at a young age, my parents used to fight a lot. So I. Uh, I, f I found out that if I uh, improv or dance, they wouldn't fight. And they would uh, get along and we'd and we get through dinner without uh, getting agita, <laughs> as you would say in Italian. Ah, okay. <laughs> so it was my first experience of making my parents laugh, not fight, through movement. And then later I developed uh, a quick sense of humor based on that, that whole uh, defense mechanism. And then, of course, I grew up in the 80s. And... Uh, I was built nice. The drinking age was 18. So uh, I was 14, 15, going out to clubs, 15, 16, you know, get, getting in clubs with the bouncers. So I was built. They go, come on in. Back then, there wasn't a picture ID. You got in the club and we just danced. We danced Fridays and Saturday nights, sometimes Wednesdays and Sunday nights. So hitting all the Brooklyn clubs and eventually we got licenses. We headed to Long Island and um, just that was my whole just feeling the music. It was, it was, uh, my father had great rhythm. My mother had great rhythm. I think it was just passed on. And because um, everybody in my family could pretty much dance. That is incredible. Like, yeah. honestly, just hearing the fact that there wasn't that, that many, like, rules or enforcements back then just to have fun and everything. That's, yeah. that's incredible. Yeah, was, yeah, 18 was the age. It was pretty cool. You know, that, these kids are now 21 and all this stuff they got going on. It's much, my time was a much better time to grow up. In the 80s, that was the place to go, time to go up. I was 18 to 28 in the 80s. That was, those were good years. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, is it safe to assume that now you're like the cool dad of the group or anything? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I would think so, yes. We started, uh, I just continued that um, entertaining dancing of uh, family and friends. And I used to make everybody hysterically laugh, so I knew I had a gift. And one time my friend... Um, 
to Long Island, called me and says, I've seen this young comedian and he reminds me of you. And now, you know, this is many, many years ago, he says Sebastian Maniscalco because of his movements. He was, you know, he was saying, wow. You know, that was a compliment. I didn't know it then because he wasn't popular. But after watching him over the years, I could see how he would compare me to him. Yes, my children made them laugh their whole life. But the, the, the breakout dance was the Sweet 16, which was 10 years ago. My daughter, was, she's 26 now. So we did a, told the DJ play a funky song. You know, first it was a slow song. And then it went to a, just play any funky song and totally improv it. And that's where the crowd and the kids went crazy and... The adults, of course, knew I was going to do something crazy all the family. So uh, that's where we really got the attention. And uh, wow. we, sent it, we sent it to the Ellen Show. Nothing ever happened, you know. Um, but uh, that's where it started. And then the video age started where she would record a lot more. She would just record more and then, you know, she just uh, developed a lot more in the archives. You know, it's totally Im improvisational. And that's been our gift, you know, just play this song, right? Nice. And, uh, Would you say that was the first film? Uh, the first, the first, first, video? first video that she posted, yeah. And we and it got a lot of love from all our friends and family. And we didn't post it on YouTube, which was YouTube was popular way back when, ten years ago. There was no TikTok and Instagram. Yeah, it was, it was just starting out, I think. Right. So yeah, it was mostly Facebook, and um, got most of the action through family and friends. But the positive feedback, their friends were like, "Shock! Oh my God, this guy can dance." Because I was always premature gray. I was 10 years younger. I was 49 at the time. Uh, I'll be 59 at the end of the month. And uh, they were just shocked. Look at this guy. He's got moves. Even the DJ said, whoa, dad. <laughs> it was pretty cool. So that's why I knew that. That's my daughter, I think, knew that, uh, uh oh, she opened up the can of worms. She knew I was nuts. Now she passed it on to her friends. Now they all wanted to see more. Well, if, if it's of any consolation, I wish my dad had that same spark of wanting to dance in front of people but um we can ask yeah most dads you know my father won't get up my father's great rhythm he's in the chair doing his thing you know rhythm, great jazz it was all kinds of music but uh i'll never get out of the seat <laughs> he's, he's, a, he's what we call a table dancer ah okay yeah that rhythm but they don't want to embarrass themselves you gotta get over that oh, that's unless totally my father if you're the male ver male version of elaine then i could see you might want to sit <laughs> Seinfeld, you know Elaine? Seinfeld? Yes, yes. <laughs> who? I mean, who doesn't know Elaine? Yeah. Okay, just checking. You want to be too? You want to be too young? No. Um. Well, it's funny. Like I consider myself an old soul, so okay. I like I know all the. I, honestly, I get all the references that you mention, especially okay. since, like, you know, my parents they're in the same age group as you. And great. No offense, sorry. No, 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 no. Uh, they're so, young, they're young. They're nice and young, your parents. <laughs> yeah, so, like, of course, they come from a different culture, but they also know, like, music was something that really brought them together. And yeah. that's something that, between them and I, like, we connect also. And yeah. um, for you to also mention, like, you know, the type of dads that, you know, could just get up and dance. And at the same time, you have, the, the dads that just sit and like you know table dance that's my father <laughs> yes he'll never do anything to embarrass himself and that's, yeah. that's the thing and oh. like as seinfeld happened to be my um, late brother's favorite show so like i get it all i it, like and that's terrible sorry no sorry uh if anything like i wanted to also describe if I hadn't before, um, this podcast is actually in honor of my brother because he just oh. loved to talk to new people and really hear different stories. And uh, it's me. I love this. Hey, I'm right up. Let's sit. Let's sit by the bar and meet new people. Tell me your journey. Tell me your story. Love it. Oh, That's that was me. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was totally my brother, and I feel like um, now that he's not here somehow like i don't in terms of my faith i just think that he didn't want his talent to go to waste so he must have told god just pass it on to my sister so she can do something definitely. <laughs> yeah definitely yeah same thing happened to me my mother passed uh, a couple of years ago and uh everything's just been snowballing since and she was my biggest fan so it's cool <laughs> oh, i'm sorry to hear that yeah. well, i see plenty of signs dimes and uh butterflies so she's around this and uh couple of videos we did on uh, her birthday went viral. 
and she, and we get that was that an orb? An orb will show up in the video, like you know, that's her. I'm here. Oh my god! So you <laughs> also believe in that too? Oh yes, I do. <laughs> oh my god! Okay, so like honestly, we're on the same vibe. <laughs> all right. So now I I feel more yeah. much more comfortable in this Me too. like interview, Me too. and I don't feel like too nervous because I was like. No. What is me it? Me too. That? I was nervous in the beginnings. Yeah. <laughs> and now I'm feeling comfortable. And uh, you're getting me to point so I'm comfortable. I might cry. So let's get let's get the happier things yeah. <laughs> before we both cry, me and you. <laughs> True. Oh my god. Okay. So um, with this whole like generational gap, and at the same time knowing that there's different social media like pages out there, like how would you say was your what was your wish? original reaction to like starting to have a tremendous following on tiktok like were you familiar uh, with tiktok once it came out or no we weren't we did, we started off on instagram and, okay. that's where, uh, and a couple of our videos went viral on um, boston from from instagram to boston and then my oh my, God. <laughs> my cousin uh who's in the uh, music industry in nashville she's an age she goes you gotta get on tiktok and this was a couple of years ago, and we just got on it last year. We kind of procrastinated. We're good at procrastinating. <laughs> so uh, we got on last year on TikTok, and that's where the exposure of TikTok. But yeah, one of the first videos I did, I, I had white pants, black shirt. I don't know if you know the song, uh, Push in the Bush from the 80s. Push, push in the bush. You yeah. know I'm trying to get that. Well, I'm in the kitchen. I, we just had a, a pregame drink, and I said to my daughter, Dominique, you never heard the song, uh, Push, Push in the Bush? She goes, what the hell is that? So I told uh, I told Siri in the corner, play Push in the Bush, and I just improv the song. This was in July. We just came back from Ireland. I was in a good mood. Blah, 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 blah. So she recorded it. She posted it on Instagram and Facebook. Got great feedback. And then her girlfriend on the train in September, months later, said, why don't you send that to Boston? So she sent it within two hours. It just went crazy. All, all our thick friends were calling, relatives were calling, what the hell are you doing on Boston? And, and the comments were, oh, from... If, you, if Gary Busey and um, Ben Stiller had a love child, uh, Ted Danson, anybody with gray hair and glasses, uh, Richard Gere, oh, I got a, uh, there was a two to three million views, right? And, and uh, I don't know how many thousands, uh, 11, 12,000 comments, and 99.1% were positive. And then the 1% were male haters, you know, that, that can't do what I can do. And they tried to say, oh, you know, make fun of me, but try and dance it. At 59 years old, like I dance, <laughs> then, you can, <laughs> then you can debate me. <laughs> Which literally actually um, transitions to the next question I had for you. Um, like to that one percent, like how how would you deal with that negative feedback, or like um, does that even like motivate you more to do what you do, or like do you have feel like a sense to respond back to that? Well, a lot of it was, you know, stupid stuff. Like, I'll change the kitchen floor. Why do you get an old TV? <laughs> you know, things about the kitchen. The wallpaper. So that's stuff you just brush off. Um, uh, that really doesn't bother me at all. What bothers me more is we have a lot of family and friends that don't share our stuff. So that hurts more. Like, what, you don't want us to succeed? You know, that kind of makes me feel... You know, a stranger to make try and hurt me. They can't touch me because I don't know you. You don't know me. But a family and friend. If I saw a, a, one of my family and friends criticizing what it's something we did or made fun of it, that would that would. So uh, yeah, I brush it off. <laughs> like, going, going, gone. You know, it's, it's, like I said, one point one percent of the comments. You know, so we're not getting much of that at all. That's what that's what's pretty much fun. We only we have like forty five videos out, and one point two on TikTok, one point two million likes. And 150,000 followers. It takes, you know, it was done pretty, it happened really fast. It went pretty fast considering, because, you know, people do a million, million, five, six TikToks a day. You know, that's not what I'm here, here for. And they do the um, the TikTok trending dances, and I can't do that either. I'm not a, a trendsetter. <laughs> I may have, well, we did two of them, one my wife and my daughter, and they're in the front doing exact movements, and I'm in the back spoofing on it, and that's what makes it fun. Oh, yeah, I, I, I saw, saw that little, video. Yeah. <laughs> That's, I thought that was great. Yeah, so that's that's what makes it fun. That's why I really think people. I mean, I look at this. So many, you know, even all the men, sexy, taking their shirts off, dancing, perfect. You know, that's that's not me. I'm the regular working class guy, regular guy. 
keep my shirt on. <laughs> 33 years ago, that shirt, whoop, that shirt was off. <laughs> no, that's, hey, to each their own, and that's yeah. very respectable. And I think my um, wife sabotaged my diet over the last 33 years. She, uh, 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 in 1988, when I got married, I joke around and say I was the sexiest man that we knew about. <laughs> the People magazine had, um, what's his face? Uh, oh, I forgot his name. He was the sexiest man alive. Uh, uh, Harmon. Mark Harmon? Mark Harmon, uh, yeah. This guy, you know, back then, and, uh, and I compared my picture on my honeymoon to his picture, and I said, oh, I think I would have got him. But nobody knew who I was. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, no. Okay, so <laughs> I, growing up, I did have a crush on Mark Harmon, and the only reason why was because there was, there was this movie called Summer School. Okay. And oh, yeah. he, he was, the, yeah, he was the protagonist and yeah, good times. <laughs> anyway, uh, so like, do you believe you're, with everything that you've just discussed, um, do you believe that you're making an impact uh, for all generations to yes. really not be afraid and like start joining the trend? Uh, I think I'm more or less. Uh, attracting all the people on TikTok to follow more than get involved. I think it's very small percentage of people that want to do TikToks at, at, at an older age. Uh, right. Oh, awesome. do I? Yeah, do I? Oh, people are duetting me. You know, all the people are duetting me. So that's a, that's a compliment. They take my dance and then they dance next to it. So yeah, oh, we did get some of that. So I guess answer your question. I would say yeah, to a small percentage. Yeah, not greatly, but I think. We're, we're getting more, I see a lot of first time is coming on and loving the account and following. And they, oh, they, I'm glad I'm on TikTok, you know, stuff, stuff like that. So I think we're attracting, um, we started off with the average age was, it was older, older people, mostly women from all over. And now since we did that, uh, dance with the special effects, you see that one, one uh, yeah, that, yeah. that, that now brought a whole new generation in because now my, not only my friends, kids are going and calling me up. My friends call saying my kids, friends, you're on TikTok, they can't believe I know you. <laughs> you know, it's like, who the hell am I? <laughs> but that's pretty cool that that video attracted them. And that one's like 2.8 million people. Right now, it's trending in Brazil, Portugal. Uh, I think when I go to Monaco next year, it's going to have a Papi got moves, Papi got moves. I'm going to have my own spoke. <laughs> no, um, yeah, that's, that's incredible. Like, yeah. I just. That's yeah, internationally, TikTok is unbelievable. Like right now, I went from 120,000 followers to 150, almost 52,000 followers, and it's been all the Spanish region, Brazil, uh, Port Portugal, uh, Brazil, Portugal, South America, Spain. Unbelievable. Incredible. I think it's fascinating the way you approach this because I, I, I mean, I have older family members and at the same time I also share that sentiment of um, whenever we succeed in something um, we're the ones doing the work in terms of like sharing it and you know wanting yeah. to spread that positivity but then the ones closer to you don't share that as well so yeah. I I completely understand that That's disappointing, yeah. I don't think they do it on purpose I, I would hope not, because that would that would hurt. You know, why would you do that on purpose? But uh, but I've had, you know, even uh, one of my good friends, I, I called up and uh, I didn't like his reaction. <laughs> you know, he's like, "Why aren't you being like, wow, this is something yeah, I knew would always happen to you?" Mm, no, no, like mm, blah 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 blah. So there is some some say jealousy, maybe. You know, possibly. perhaps, perhaps. Um, yeah. I I don't not. I really don't want to like try and yeah. put words or anything yeah. but, um i mean i don't have that in, on tiktok i don't have that much of a following but yeah. like sometimes i do receive like comments as like oh wow you're such a production artist and i'm like mm, thanks like the way you just said it like am i supposed to take it like a compliment <laughs> and then all of a sudden they're like oh next time you do that record me so i can like it can look the same and i'm like mm, no like yeah. each yeah. craft is different for somebody like yes i mean yeah. if we're doing duets yeah, yeah you're trying to do it in a similar yeah. way but putting your own 
you know, taste to it. Yeah. But and when you yeah. go live, people want to get on with you. And if you why would I put someone on that I don't know about? It could be setting me up for like a real verbal, you know, controversy. So no, unless you know somebody, you've had chats with them before and you've been on their lives and your lives and they've been on your life, then you got a little something going and then you you bring them on, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that's that's one of I I guess without even like knowing like talking to you directly, um I just felt that maybe you did have a story to tell, which prompted me to reach out and say, Hey, like, I know you have a story and this isn't like, this isn't me trying to broadcast my podcast, but I think it's more of like trying to help you get people to understand you rather than just, you know, Oh, that's the cool dad. Yeah. But, Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm into this interaction. That's my uh, thing. Conversation, interaction, because um, when I'm talking, let's say we were live right now, people are typing, saying, I, I, I lose my personality, I got to read it. It becomes very robotic. I need to be able to interact with people. You, right. you say stuff and stuff pops in my head. My, mother's, my mother used to go, think before you speak, think before you speak. And I was like, mm, pops in my head, I got to say it. <laughs> oh my God, my brother used to tell me the same thing and yeah. he would just be like whenever i wouldn't think before speaking he would just look at me and would be like you're really stupid sometimes <laughs> I'm like ouch <laughs> sorry <laughs> my, my but, thing was that like, nine out of ten times i guess people laugh so i got positive laughter is is the best uh, um medicine and best feedback you can get you know that's just very true instant um instant uh feedback is cool, yeah so now we're going to like um, shift this a little bit into okay. like a new segment I like to call Two Cents Worth, which okay. would be like sort of to like get to know you more apart from this, um, let's say, persona from TikTok. Yeah. So, so now we're going to like um, shift this a little bit into okay. like a new segment I like to call Two Cents Worth, which okay. would be like sort of to like get to know you more apart from this, um, let's say, persona from TikTok. So first question. Okay. okay. What was the... <laughs> All right. What was the worst style choice you've ever made? Well, I didn't make it. My wife did. She dyed my hair for Halloween, and I totally lost my mojo. I was nobody. Jet black hair walking around. I was invisible. I'm walking into buildings because it takes a couple of days for the dye to get. I'm going to work, and people are, who the hell is that guy? Oh, it's Dennis. <laughs> it was like, so I knew right then and there my, my mojo, was, my power was in the hair. Ah, okay, okay. So that's the worst, I think, choice. Ooh. And I listened to them for Halloween. I forgot what the costume was. It was okay, but two weeks of walking around with no person, with no uh, mojo was tough. Ouch. <laughs> um, now, who would you say was your childhood actor or actress crush? I liked uh, Dark Hair, Dark Eyes. So Natalie Wood was one of my favorites. Raquel yeah. Welsh, and I also like Jane Seymour. Those hey. are the yeah, I always looked, uh, I always, I guess Italian Spanish. It wasn't the California blondes, it wasn't the, uh, you know, blonde hair, blue eyes. It was definitely dark hair, dark eyes. Nice. It was my uh, crush in movies, yeah. Natalie was special, and then uh, she had that accident. Right? Robert Wagner, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, now, this is, an Im- impromptu question. Okay. Um, which, um, since you referenced Natalie Wood, and I love Natalie Wood, um, what would you, how would you classify, let's say, what are your favorite films from Natalie Wood? Now you're testing my, anyway, I watched them. She's, she's a lot older than me. <laughs> <laughs> 
well, she, she was, of course, she was that little girl in that movie, but that's what was in the track. Me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, Miracle on 34th Street. <laughs> yeah, of course, that wasn't it. It was when she was older, and I can't remember those movies. What's that story, right? What's that story? Uh, one. That would be, I guess that would be the first one. Yeah, Maria. Whoa, Maria. Just met that girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she got me in that one. <laughs> I was ready. I wanted to jump on the screen and do my thing. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now for Raquel Welch. She was mostly in a uh, poster. She was a pinup more than uh, movies that I remember. But there was the one scene on a beach, I think, you know. Uh, her in the water. That that was pretty uh, sexy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then for Jane Seymour. Jane Seymour again. I don't remember the movies. She's. Oh, do you remember any of the movies? Because she was in the classic movies that were on TV. What like miniseries? Was there a miniseries with Jane Seymour? Something might have been a miniseries with Jane Seymour. Mm. I feel like Google you've been it. in so many Google movies. Google it, Jane Seymour. <laughs> I'm telling my daughter, Google it. <laughs> she did something that was, um, I can't remember. Oh. Like Dr. Quinn? Oh, that was a series, right? She was yeah. no, a little younger than Dr. Quinn. Somewhere in Time? With oh, yeah, that movie Reed. was great. The movie was great. With time traveling or something like that? Wasn't it somewhere in Time? I, right? I, I just Did remember that it's with Christopher Reeve. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She was good in that. That might have been one of those. Yeah. She just and then, had done. And her accent was great, right? She had a great accent. Jane oh Seymour. It was attractive, too. Awesome. So, all right. Uh, next question. Um, Julia Roberts. Yes. Hey, Julia Roberts. <laughs> Pretty woman. I liked her, too. <laughs> oh, Julia Roberts. Oh, yeah. yes. I was like... She was a dark, and, oh, mostly dark hair. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, duh, like her working with Richard Gere, that was yeah. epic. That was and epic. And Jennifer, if you're updating it now, Jennifer Garner, too, is pretty, uh, she's good. Oh, yeah. 13 yeah. going on 30. That was my yeah, favorite she's, film. She's great. She's funny. She's tall. She's physical. She's, uh, got, she's got the whole package. And Grace has human, too. Well, I hope your wife doesn't get mad by the way you're describing these women. <laughs> no. Me and my wife were born on the same day. She's a female version of me. No, she's not. We're totally different. But uh, we all were, were, were born the same day, two years apart. Really? Met on the dance floor. We met in a club on the dance floor. She oh, no, was, it, it was meant to be. Yeah, she was two years behind me. So when I, I remember I started earlier than her. I was two years ahead. When I was 16, she was 14. She was going to... Uh, teen rollerblading and teen discos when I was in the clubs. Then finally, oh, she got bumped. They turned to 21 the year she she was turning 18. They got bumped to 21, I think. So she had to wait another three years. And she never caught up to me till November 15th, 1985. We lived only a couple of miles away from each other, two different rivalry high schools. She went to, uh, we went to a club called uh, Metro 700 in Franklin Square, Long Island. Uh, she never drove. I used to always drive. My friends, they were all this. So I let them drink and I would dance it off and I'd be the designated driver. This night, someone else drove, so I drank a little more. I saw her over the years in the clubs. Well, that last year we caught up to the same age. I saw her pass me a couple of times, you know, and little eye contact and I lost her. Well, this year I saw her and uh, she's on the dance floor. And then she came off. And I very rarely ask girls to dance because... That power of them of rejecting you can ruin your whole night, you know? So what I would do is go on the dance floor and I would dance in your area. And then if you turned around and we had eye contact and faced each other, then we were committed, then we were dancing. And the conversation started after. So this particular night, because I was a little, hello, a little happy, I went over to her and said, you want to dance? She looked me up and down. I think she was drunk too. <laughs> she looked me up and down. And then she said, yes. And if she said no, we wouldn't be here today. We wouldn't have dads got moves. My daughter would start the cat. We were super 16. Back to the future. Woo! It's all gone. Oh, my God. Wow. Yeah, so that, her looking me up and down and saying yes was the start of, uh, and we were, we were, we had chemistry. We were like on the dance floor. Our friends had to pull us apart. We're not, we're not into public displays of affection either. And we were like, mm. <laughs> we were lip locking. They had to hose us down and separate us. <laughs> 
this could possibly be the best love story I've ever heard. Well, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, yeah, it was definitely a uh, meeting your soulmate love story. Yeah, definitely. So, wow, yeah. that is, that yeah, is really great. beautiful. And then the next day on the phone, what, when's your birthday? What's on you, Leo? Leo, when's your birthday? Really? When's my birthday? <laughs> and that's where, it's, wow, this is something special. There's something special about that night, her having an aura about it, it attracted me to her, to ask her to dance. And then the birthday thing was boom, boom, two, and then uh, three was, uh, I guess, dating. We fought during the whole courtship. Because <laughs> she's going to go to friends, I used to go to my friends, but you know, I, I, uh, trust issues. She's going to go to friends. Is she going to make out someone else besides me? <laughs> so you were the one having trust issues and not Yes, because I was older. She was younger, two years so older. She wasn't up to my par of maturity. Oh, uh, she claimed okay. she is, but she wasn't. And I've been going out since uh, 16, and, and I was dating all the girls, too. So I had a lot of uh, experience, and she was still running around with the miniskirt up to here. Look at me, look at me. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> She got long legs. Let's what can I say? You have your own. You have the opportunity to have your own late night talk show. Okay. This is like a two part question. Okay. What would you name the show, and who would you invite as your first guest? Oh, the name of the show. We can't do Apple TV. Uh, so we do. <laughs> we name the show. Oh. Tell me your journey. Tell me your journey. Tell me your journey. So I'd be very interested in interviewing people and hearing where they, their journey from start to finish. Because that's my favorite thing when I go to a bar. People like me, successful people, not successful people, just tell me your journey. And, and you learn so much out of that. So much to learn from just listening to older people. Not my age, but older. <laughs> yes, and who would you, yeah, and who would you have as your first guest? First guest, uh, well, probably... Uh, Richard Gere, so we can get this uh, debate out of the question. <laughs> do I look like you? Do you look like me? Like, can you move? Can I move? So that would be a funny <laughs> thing. <laughs> and then uh, Jennifer Gray will be next because we got so many comments about um, the Dirty Dancing video. We did, I danced to a song in Dirty Dancing. Did you see that one? Yes. Yeah, 3.4 million, 6 million people. Uh, hilarious comments and a lot of uh, Patrick Swayze. And that's the, that's the Best compliment I ever got. Patrick Swayze is a Juilliard trained dancer. Well, I'm a Brooklyn Club trained dancer. And then to say that I have a, any kind of charisma like he did, wow. Take that to the bank. Wow. So if she's, I heard a rumor she's doing Dirty Dancing too. She's turning 60. I'm turning 59. So the ages are comp comparable. Um, I can't shine Patrick Swayze's shoes, but I could be a senior citizen instructor in the in the Cushies or the club or the, the Jewish place up town. Hey, baby, 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 I'll be doing my dance. And then she'll look at me and go, my new love interest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that sounds like a great, great plot. Call me. Call me. I'm on the guild yet, but call me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I did not even hear that, that she was like, doing uh, Dirty Dancing 2? Dirty Dancing 2, yeah. I could be the new love interest. <laughs> there you go. Hey. It, um, now. What was the, so, what was the, yeah, that was, what, you were at the, uh, the show and my guests. So, those are two guests, the name of the show we did. And, of course, comedians. I love comedians. I feed off funny people. So, I'm in a room with uh, people with sense of humor. It just comes out of me. That, that think before you speak, it just goes three times faster than normal. Funny people. <clears throat> Just pull it, throw it right out of me, you know. So I would definitely have a Jerry Seinfeld, Sebastian Maniscalco, uh, any anybody in the humorous uh, comedians it would, would be fun. Nice. So uh, now that you mentioned, like you know, Dirty Dancing, it, was there a particular dance move from that um, film, except from the one that you already did on TikTok, that you would redo for TikTok? Uh, again, I'm terrible at choreography, but I guess if it's a fresh choreography, they could teach me. But uh, that one I did it was totally that song. I first time I heard it, besides from Dirty Dancing when it was when it was trending, I said I have to dance to that song, and I knew it. 
And I think I danced to that on my father's birthday. 11-3, was that? I think it was 11-3. I danced to it on my father's birthday. And um, just went crazy. So I, I, this, I, the song jumped at me and grabbed me. I knew I would feel it. And it was one take. We don't do, we only do one take. It's, it's, because uh, the funny part is my daughter puts me on camera. First, if she's playing the song in the background, I'm, I'm dancing around before she does it. She goes, that's the best one. And I missed she says that's because that's the first, that's the real first take. But then she makes me do it. And then she goes, ah, oh, the first one was better. <laughs> but she, but it's still one take. But, you know, yeah. Right. So that's song, that song we just, we, we didn't practice, play the song, hit it, what I felt, I felt. Even though, did you see the tightrope one, tightrope? Well, can yes. I, that's totally, you know, play the song. I'm listening to the words and I threw that in there and prompt the tightrope and everybody's going crazy with it. Yeah. I, yeah. It's so, like, I'm always amazed by, like, how you don't follow the trends, but yet you are a trendsetter in that aspect. Because, I mean, there's so many dance moves that occur on TikTok and, like, yeah. people do get followings based on how well they can copy such trends. Yeah. Yes. But yet, millions, of, millions of viewers they have. Millions and millions of viewers of doing, you know, just following, following, doing that. Exactly. And meanwhile, like, people like us, like, we're yeah. trying to do a different, yeah. like, things. And yet, yeah. we don't have that much of a big following. However, I will say that you do have much of a following than I do. So, yeah, but to you. <laughs> I totally agree with you. There's some people, I look at their, their I watch five or six of their videos, then I look at the kind of following and saying, how? Why? You know, I don't get it. Yeah. My daughter's talented. She started TikTok her own stuff before Dad's got moves, and she does these. She does those dances and her own dances, and it's just it's not hitting. You know, it's not taking off. You know, yeah. It's, it's weird. I was just some things click. I, if my opinion, I think it's the combination of the song and then your originality. I think are the two things that if you can get a trending song and do something like we did the uh, the one with the, uh, the special effect. So the DJ that mixed those songs together uh, thanked us because he, you know, so many views, you know, that helped, I'm sure people jumped him up. Um, but it was, that, that was a special effect that was trending then. So his DJs, his songs went through the roof because everyone wanted to know where to, where to get the mix from. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the, already, the special effects was already trending. His songs probably trended from that, you know, and then my moves just added to it. Yeah. yeah, see, like, I, I feel like we we could be the ones that, or maybe, I think you already found the solution to, like, how to break the um, the TikTok algorithm. Yeah, I think it's it's, it's the song and the trend. But now they, TikTok sent me to South America. Am I ever coming back? <laughs> I'm getting, like, one or two uh, uh, United States comments. It's hysterical. Yeah, yeah. I, they sent me. They sent me there. That's okay, fine. You know, it's going to build that up, and then if I do another one, it's going to hit. You know, you know, mm -hmm. the American audience again. Now I know you mentioned the '80s as you know, quite the the era, like the year. Um, but like, if you would have to choose a decade between like the '60s, '70s, '80s, or '90s. Which one do you love the most and why? Uh, I think the 80s was going back. It still looks like the 60s. You know, I was uh, born in 62, so eight years, third grade. Not too many, uh, <laughs> not great, uh, bad memories, but not too many spectacular memories. <laughs> uh, 70s were good, the music the trend. My mother was, she dressed us to the T. She wore a house dress. We lived in the projects uh, in Brooklyn. and. The old ladies used to line up on the bench and wait for me and my brother to leave for school. My mother dressed us. To, we were Irish twins, 16 months apart, 14 months apart. And she would dress us in matching outfits. And she would polish our sneakers every night before we went to bed. She, and we walked out. She would come out. She would spend the money on her. She spent on us. Drove my father crazy with the charge cards, Macy's and all that stuff. We had the best outfits, though. They, that's what they used to fight a lot about. How much money is spending? But look how bad the kids look. <laughs> but she dressed us to the nines and, you know, everybody waited for us to, so that's where my, I, I love clothes, you know, so that's where it came from. And, um, 
Yeah, that, that, that was the 70s that I remember. And the mute, again, dancing on the end table was a great music era. I mean, great music in the 70s. The 80s was when I turned 18 and really started going out and having fun. And uh, met my wife in 85, so it was uh, five years, halfway through the decade. <laughs> and then uh, we got married in 88, so another three years. But that, those were good years. And then the kids came. Had two kids, uh, well, 89 and 92 and 95, three kids. Three kids, three years apart. So I guess, yeah, the, it overlaps because things got better and better. And now if I tell you, even at, at this age, 59, it's really great. We gave the uh, gift of education to our children. And um, they cut, my wife cut the umbilical cord as soon as they graduated. Said, you can come home anytime you want. You got a meal, rent free, the laundry done. But we're not subsidizing your rent until you can, when you can afford to move out, you move out. And he worked for each one of my kids. They all worked hard, got raises, moved out when they could. And um, now they take us out for dinner. <laughs> they pay. They're thankful. And they pay their own way on vacation. So it's pretty good. I, I got into a trade at 18 years old. And if I told you, I was construction trade, a sheet metal worker. And I retired at 55 and a half. I got a full pension now. And I'm driving my wife crazy, so hopefully this stuff takes off. And uh, I have uh, some, uh, she wants me to get a part-time job doing something, <laughs> get out of the house. And, um, but uh, yeah, it's, it was a great, great journey. And now I'm enjoying, because I don't, you know, you don't have to make this much anymore. You can make this much and still live the same life. So that's yeah. pretty cool. Because your expenses go down as the kids get out of college. And, you know, you don't need to make that money anymore. Just sit back. Uh, my my advice to young people is um, manifest success, future, be nice to everybody on the way up because you meet them on the way down. <laughs> um, uh, and manifestation is good because it makes you work towards your goal. But when you get there and you get that big house and that sports car and this and that, you realize you really didn't need it. Because how many houses, we only have one house, I always only have one house. But people have multiple houses. How many houses can you live in? How many cars can you drive? How many places are you going to be at the same time? Come on. I want a better world for everybody. I want everybody to build them up. Better world for everybody. World peace. Let's all dance. Let's all get along. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I, I think I think you can take over my podcast if you want. No, 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 no. You saw something in me and you saw it watching me live, right? And that's when you invited me to this. So I appreciate you. I thank you for uh, reaching out to me. Uh, you know, 10 followers, 4,000 followers, 20,000 followers. This is a good experience for me. I need, I needed this, you know, appreciate that. No, anytime. And I, I think what, what really captures me right now is the fact that no matter like the generations or, um, or ages or whatnot, there's, there's always that story that you can also relate to. And in my case, like, I'm hearing you speak and you talk, like, well about your parents and, like, how, honestly, my mom's the same way. It, it, even with my brother being alive before, like, she would always try her best to give us everything. And then, like, she would sort it out with my father. Yeah. But now now the roles have switched and yeah. it's you're right it's something that now my parents can just you know sit back and at the same time i'm working or right now since i have time off i can you know oh, hang out with them yeah and spend time with them something that really in the culture sense wasn't something we were able to do because they had to work hard and I had to stay somewhere else to be cared for or just go to school and then see them at night. And of course, like uh, sometimes they just tell me, Oh, if I ever did something wrong, please let me know. And I apologize. I'm like, you did nothing wrong. No. I mean, I mean, I'm pretty sure there wasn't like a manual for parenting. No. And Agreed. so, I mean, I tell them to this day, you can't blame yourselves for, like, how my brother turned out or, like, what, no. what happened. But now, like, we all have a second chance to, like, move forward. And 
in part, that's what I like to do with this podcast. And it's yes. great. It's awesome. Yeah. And of course, when I saw your live, I was like, okay, definitely. I know mm -hmm. that he can inspire. Um, even like my generation or people that come across my podcast and, you know, yeah, they'll hear you and it'll be amazing. I love talking to young people. One of my things is, uh, one of my statements is I say, uh, um, to people that have children, I say, don't eat their, uh, leftovers. Love handles aren't developed overnight. It's years and years of eating your kids leftovers. So my V, my beautiful V went to an hourglass <laughs> because I eat three kids, love, uh, three kids leftovers. Remember to spread out. There's, Three kids in six years. So when did they finish their meals? 16? <laughs> so that's a long time of eating leftovers. <laughs> so I, I can't blame my wife. She's a great cook, great mixologist. But uh, I was a stress eater, you know, based on the fact, work and providing money, college, I uh, worry about everything. So I really, you know, I'm addicted to chocolate. So every night at seven o'clock, where's the dog chalk? And I'm on all fours crawling around, <laughs> looking for the hiding spots. <laughs> So, right. yeah, my, that's why if I see young kids, when I see somebody uh, who's in shape, you know, I said, uh, you know, don't try and uh, work out harder as you get older. Get your diet under control and it'll be easier, you know. Eat properly and less sugar. Don't develop the love handles, which are harder to lose as you get older, and you'll be fine. I try to work out hard and burn more, and it's too much. <laughs> too much on the body. So, yeah, I love meeting young people and, and giving them advice like the manifestation, dietary advice, fitness advice, world life, uh, life lessons, you know. I love that. Yeah, so I, I guess I can relate to the, the younger people. Thank you for noticing that. Uh, anytime. And that's, it's very inspirational. And I'm sure, I'm sure your, your kids are extremely proud and happy to have you as their father. And, um, I feel like I, I, I most of the time they are ninety nine point nine that one percent again when they go oh my god he's repeating himself <laughs> as I got older I realized that the things that pop in your head they recycle now I oh. used to say the same joke twice for I could say well thirties I guess forty all of a sudden my sons and daughters say, you know you've been saying that stuff over oh really so it's being recycled. <laughs> I can only imagine what I'm going to be like in my 60s. I got a year to go. <laughs> oh, my God. No, like, my mom is actually a year younger than you, and she does the exact same thing. Yeah. <laughs> and that's I tell true. her, hey, I'm like, hey, mom, like, that's a wonderful joke, but I heard it, like, <laughs> three times already. Yeah, She's like, yeah. But then she, like, like, literally puts me in my spot and is and she's like okay it might have been the third time but what happens if i told it better than the other two times yeah. <laughs> she felt like it was better this time yeah and i was like, better, okay. why am i not getting a better response because i heard it twice already thank you all right take that back <laughs> but of cool. course but like you know how um capricorns and aquarius is clash it's like yeah. that's that's me and my mom so okay. God and my bless. dad's a Libra, so that's a little... Yeah, a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm the one that's always trying to tame the waters here. Nice. And Love yeah. it. But, um... The best part of COVID, right? The best part of COVID was everybody was able to reunite their families and have dinners together and work from home. And so that's the one positive thing you can take out of it. Oh, definitely. Um, I mean, there was there was a moment where my father had to stop working which i for me i was glad because he has to work he's a painter and had to work mm -hmm. outside and stuff yeah but Tough then job. yeah and at the same time i felt like his boss wasn't being too considerate yeah you but, get a lot of in construction and, you get a lot of bosses that aren't really, yeah. yeah and he had to return back and you know just recently um like three no, like four weeks ago, he was um, he he was vaccinated already, like mm -hmm. back in in April. But then he tested positive. Yeah, and that's, and that's um, mm -hmm. that was oh, a whole yeah. that was a whole new experience. And 
I was afraid. And of course, people were telling me, oh, but he's vaccinated. Everything will be fine. I'm like, not necessarily, right? Um, yeah, fever. He had just about everything, but it was wow. mild. Thank God. Yeah. So, of course, my. Like, I'm very much an advocate for mental health. And, of course, I was more worried about how he was going to react to all of this being on his own for two weeks. Something that he wasn't accustomed to because, yeah. hey, like, we're we're a close-knit family. Yes. And that's and, something... And I know that men don't do much <laughs> for themselves. <laughs> I can attest to that. Well, from a man's perspective, it's also, it's great to hear that. But, like, yeah. I don't... Like I my dad it. rarely talks, so um, to start seeing him opening up, opening up a little bit of like how this, the experience changed him and uh, how he still remained the same, but it's like you know, it, I think this is the most important thing that this entire like event taught us and that's really to speak out more and really be more transparent mm -hmm. and um now it's yeah i mean in part that's also why i started the podcast because sometimes i just felt like who can i talk to or how can i learn more about what's going out and going on out there and you know of course now that things are like slowly coming back to normal i should say um you know a lot of people enhance their craft or their talent during this this pandemic so i i started off this podcast hearing stories of how people were like trying to adapt and then i switched gears into like okay what did you do during the pandemic that is actually making you change now? And how has that been working out for you? And the response has been great, honestly. Great. And, you know. If you would ask me that question, I actually got it last March of 20, 2020. And uh, it's just nine days of fever and uh, okay. crazy dreams at night and everything. And no appetite. I lost 13 pounds in nine days. I was back to my high school weight <laughs> in nine days, uh, but it was very uh, tough. It was tough physically. It just felt. I felt like I was at age like ten years you now. Oh I was dragging God. my feet while walking. I had no energy. I was wasn't hungry. So yeah, it wasn't wasn't fun. There was no video making. Most of the COVID, we didn't really do videos. We went into like hiatus for a while, and we kind of had the time. Not really. She was still working from home. My daughter, so she was working long hours from home. And my motivation was like, oh. but people are so happy when we kicked it back in. No, we need you now more than ever. That was cute. Yeah. So that was fun. Wow. Uh, honestly, like, I, I know I should have asked, but I think it was, I, I kind of wanted to see how we could, like, a, switch gears in terms of, like, if you do, did have, like, a story in terms of, um, how you and your family dealt during this pandemic, but you know, I'm sorry that you've had to go through that. Um, yeah, it, it was, it was, uh, the, I was, my joke part of it is like, uh, I retired in uh, 2018 in February and I never felt retired until pandemic hit, but the whole country was retired with me. Everybody's home. What the hell's going on? <laughs> that was showing me crazy. You know what I'm saying? It felt like I finally retired, you know, and the whole world's home. All the kids are home. They want to. My son, Jersey City, moved home to want to live with us. We got the gym. We got this. We got, we got the hot tub. They're all jumping in the hot tub. Um, where's my retirement? <laughs> so it was the joke of it all. But it was great to have more. And everything while taking care of myself. And luckily enough, I was working remotely because I work in. Um, I work in education okay. and, and, um, when I, once this pandemic occurred and everything, I heard that one of my, um, English teachers that really shaped my educational career 
I was diagnosed with it. And then what, what ended up being the day that he was supposed to leave the hospital, he passed, he passed away. And it was I want to tell you, you know, really got your passion about teaching and everything. Yeah, no, it, it, like, I, I cried, yeah, it was on Good Friday that he passed away, and, and then I realized, wow, how, how is his family dealing with this? Because it was during the time that nobody could bury their loved one. Yeah, you couldn't be around in the hospital either. You couldn't even be there at the end. Exactly. So, oh. so literally, my my teacher was the type of person that, I, if I think the word legend doesn't even come wow. close to describing how great of a human being he was. Um, but here in mm-hmm. my town, he's everyone has a story with him because that's how. That's how compassionate and caring he was for each of our students and even for me and my classmates. How old was he? He was 72. I mean, still young. If COVID didn't come, he'd still be here, right? Exactly. And he had already retired from from working. So, no, but that for me was the number one thing where... It's either now or never that we make the transition to inform, bring awareness, and yes. and then like just recently, like when my father was diagnosed, um, came out positive. That same day, one of my cousin's uncles passed away from COVID. Wow! So it really, really brings you brings everything to life. Priorities. Yeah. Yes. Totally. So it, so in this case, when I, when I go on social media and I see like, you know, pages or people with their profiles and their positivity, it's like, I know I can't be the only one that is always wanting to bring stories to light or bring awareness. So how can I like talk to people that I know? will shift my thinking and at the same time shift other people's thinking and that for me i think that was a sign the day i saw your live because i was like i am not missing out on this opportunity to ask yes. um which i'm grateful for because that's pretty cool i you know, i found it so cool that you were interested i was responding yeah. to you i was kind of like trying to pay attention to you only when a million people are asking questions not a million you know. 10 people asking <laughs> questions. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Glad you did because it's, it's a good experience for me. And um, it's pretty cool. I'm still trying to find my niche. Um, I want to like change the world and, and make it a better place, but I don't know where, when, and why. But I think uh, my mother sends me signals and I'm heading in the right direction. I, you know, I think uh, dancing and my sense of humor is somehow going to mix and, and come out. And, and I'm going to share with more than my friends and family. and See where it goes. I have no desire to be famous, paparazzi, any of that crap. But if, I, if uh, as far as a positive platform like yourself, and you know, just advising and telling your life stories, and if you could help people get out of depression, or make them motivated, keep them happy, that'd be, that's great. You know, so you I'm sure you show does that for people, and that's it's pretty cool. You found your niche. I'm gonna, I'm still searching. It'll come to me. <laughs> Uh, I don't want to jinx it, but uh, uh, Cedric the Entertainer has a video show. Did you know that he's going into his second season on CBS, where he he uh, hosts a show of videos, and they contacted two different, I guess, search people in his organization contacted us for three and two videos they want to post on the show. So it should be on starting eight twenty is season two. So hopefully, there's five videos, five different videos at different times, or get on a show for uh for uh, increasing the popularity of that you know. yes and i would i would definitely advertise that for you so yeah. people can like check it out because yeah. you know that's got moves but he also has you know yeah. in, 
<laughs> advice and wisdom. So <laughs> it's cool. Yeah, that's a good advertisement. That's great. Because like I always said, I got more than moves, and nobody knows that. You know, and my wife, my daughter's kind constantly of saying, smile more, smile more. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> when I was on the dance floor, it was mostly serious. You know, it wasn't, you weren't walking around. That wasn't as yeah. cute. <laughs> See, that's my thing. Like, I, I feel like people don't realize that when you put a serious face while you're dancing, it's because you're, you're feeling the moves. So, and yeah. And like, if, or you're, don't even bother. It's because you're that's what you feel in that song. Yeah. Yeah, and if you just smile, it's like, oh, I learned the routine, so here, here it is, and yeah. like, that's the old dance in school, <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. I'm, I, I feel like in that department, I'm speaking a little bit by experience because I used to look like a robot dancing. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the so, dance recitals and, and the professional dances, they have that. They have to do that look, you know? Right. And smile all the time and, you know. But you're in a club. You are trying to act you know, sexy and pick somebody up. There ain't no smiling. <laughs> whoop, whoop. <laughs> okay, so um, now. You have plenty of material? You got a lot of stuff? I feel like I have two more things, but I okay, think go, 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 you might have answered them, but let's see. Oh. Um, if you if you had the opportunity, let's say, to write a book, oh. like an autobiography, what would the title be? I think the whole philosophy of uh, of treating people you want to be treated was always in the back of my mind. You know, treat people the way you want to be treated. So I think because I I think I lived my life that way. You know, if I had if you challenge me, like, you don't want to be my friend, or, you know, security guard, you walk in, he's got an attitude. Uh, we walked for COVID test recently, the nurse had an attitude. I leave, they're my friend. That's my goal. You're not going to have an attitude, you're not going to not dislike me, you don't know me. When I leave in that seven, eight minutes, you're going to like me and say, wow, I'm going to make an impression and you're going to be my friend. So that's, treat people the way you want to be treated, yeah. And, and when they come at you like that, I love the challenge of winning them over. Like when I first do construction in this building, the security guy had a real attitude. Uh, when he looked me in the eye, uh, two days later, what's up, my brother? Handshake and everything. You know, it's just, and I won. That's my goal. You're not going to, I don't lose friends. I make friends. <laughs> and, I, wow. and I keep them. Yeah. So it'll be more on that, uh, my journey from, and the adversity of, of people trying to be mean to me but I wasn't going to let them. Yeah. And nice. dancing making them laugh always breaks it. You know, you, you can make someone laugh through dancing That's it's over. It's th that face goes, whoop, that serious face just disappears. <laughs> <laughs> so it's pretty cool, yeah. So I think, uh, yeah, treat people the way you want to be treated would be the, uh, I think, yeah. My grandfather, uh, Larry, was big on um, he also said you can't know everything about anything in business and life, so just surround yourself with talented people that do know that. You know? So that was another uh, another aspect. And uh, Papa Larry, my father's father, was a big fan of mine. He saw something in me. Uh, he was always building me up. You know, my parents were always you know arguing a lot. Papa Larry would be the one to go. You got this. You got this. You can change the world. You know. So. It's pretty cool. My parents loved each other. They just argued. And uh, uh, then my mother passed. My, you think my father would be happy? He's miserable and he's, he misses her. So you know, he, he definitely uh, lost something. I really thought he was going to go, I won! Because he used to argue and say, well, I'm going to live you. I'm going to live you. Right? So they got to live each other. And then when, I thought he'd go, I won. And he never did I won. He, he lost. He lost yeah. that so it's pretty sad to see him. He aged so much since my mother passed. And that was three years ago when I retired. Wow. Chris, yeah, that was tough. But to see him, you know, not win, but lose and lose bad, that, that, that sucked. Yeah. I'm going to go, uh, like the notebook, me and my wife, I'm going to go uh, holding hands, spooning. Chica, it's over, Johnny. <laughs> Oh my god. That's, that's my goal. 
the fact that I understood the reference without <laughs> even having seen the movie completely is just for me it's hilarious. Uh, but wow, uh, I honestly I came into this interview nervous as hell. Me too. And My first. now, honestly, I feel like I'm coming out of this inspired and motivated. That's that's good. And uh, that's what I just hope to do is to help people and boost them up and give them the confidence to do something even better. You know? Hopefully I take off and I'll always be, you call me back, I'm coming back to you. I'm loyal. I'm a loyal guy. <laughs> no <Enough>. shock. <laughs> I'm back. No, I, I appreciate it very much. And I'm sure everyone that will, that can tune into this uh, episode will also feel that that inspiration that um wisdom side of you and um they can also take away the fact that sometimes you just gotta dance it off and yeah, this thing is the best medicine that's for sure best medicine they we show the uh like the videos of the cancer patients and stuff they're dancing their asses off right it's the best, that true. best medicine <laughs> Dancing and laughter, laugh. you get people to laugh. Ooh. It's double dose. Yeah. <laughs> Dennis, Excellent. it's been a pleasure talking to you. And of course, you know, thank you to your daughter, Dominique, for, you know, setting the perfect um, setting and, you know, right angle of the camera <laughs> to like talk <laughs> with you. Great. And, well, and thank you for, you know, just seeing my live and see, seeing something in me that you know was worth talking about so i appreciate that much appreciated here too thank you most definitely I hope, hope this helps you and uh we'll help try to help you advertise it and boom i'm feeling good yeah uh, i i've had a gift that things things that i touch people do well so i'm passing on my energy to you to do well <laughs> thank you so much and of course right. the the sentiment is reciprocal because like it's like it's not only to help myself either, but it's also to help you. Yes. And I and help the people I listen. Yes. Yes, and of course, everyone that I talk to, I always consider friends and family. So Great. please, please know okay. that. Well, thank you for welcoming to the family. <laughs> I'm Every, in. All of you are like you know my aunts and uncles and like cousins. Okay. So. <laughs> Thanks again. Appreciate it. So what did you guys think? Um, it was such an honor and a pleasure to speak with Dennis. And, you know, just a little recap. Um, you've heard it from him where it was such an unexpected experience for him to arrive on TikTok and, you know, just to have an amazing following and support from people he doesn't even know and at the same time you know celebrate his dancing and of course shout out to his daughter for being there for be and for you know recording his amazing talent and you know sharing with us that gift that her father has and again like if you really want to feel inspired and feel that sense of wisdom to really pursue something that you've just been holding back, <clears throat> definitely, definitely listen to this episode. Listen to Dennis and check him out on TikTok, on Instagram at Dad's Got Moves. And, you know, next time or even for this episode, if you even have any questions for Dennis in the near future, definitely, definitely, I encourage you to reach out to my two cents on Instagram, on WordPress. Like, if you want to ask a question, definitely click the link in the show notes to record your question or even write it out. Uh, you'll see the button, like, the buttons for emails or video submissions, you let me know. And again, 
don't forget to follow my two cents sense and change on social media and be sure to check out my two cents website just to stay updated and to see who our following guest will be the, the next time and i'll leave you with this remember we all have the possibility to spark sense and inspire change within ourselves and to others. Okay? Don't ever forget that. And stay cool, people. Until next time.